I think there are so many women in this sort of situation who end up single in their 30s who are amazing and they don't seem to be meeting the right, or, you know, or a, guy, a guy that matches <laughs> up to their level. But I think there's something to be said about the fact that when you are in your 30s and you have your own success and you've built your own life and you're independent, you don't need someone. So they have to be really, really special for you to want to actually invest your time in them. I think there are a lot of women out there who are talented, smart, successful. And in their 30s, they really start to see the fruits of their labour. That's when you probably hit your peak in terms of how much money you're going to make. But I also think those women, a lot of those women, are terrible for relationships and terrible within relationships, which is why they're single in their 30s. But because they're women, these women can be awful people. Awful people. But because they're women, we just gloss it over. She's independent. She don't need a man. Her personality is probably shit. <laughs> Let's be real. There are a lot of these women who are attractive, successful. You know, they got their own place, own car. No kids, but they're single because their personalities suck. They're not very nice to be around. These are the women who spend all their time prioritizing their career and no time prioritizing relationships. Chris, hi. Wow, you have the exact amount of hair that you have in your profile photo. You have no idea how refreshing that is. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah, before we order drinks, can I just lay a few things out into the table so we're both not wasting our precious times when we could be answering unread emails? <laughs> so um, I'm looking for a husband and someone to have kids with. Oh, yikes, I know. <laughs> um, I'm not saying right now, you don't have to impregnate me on top of these menus. That's just what I'm looking for right now. So if commitment is like the boogeyman to you, I totally get it, but you know. Boo. Also, I have never come to completion solely by having an eggplant inside of my flower garden. It's important that you know that. In my multiple years of being sexually active, it's never happened not once. So I appreciate you not making your entire personality about being the person who changes that. <laughs> it's gonna affect your manhood. I'm probably just not the girl for you. And I'm definitely not gonna spend the next 10 years pretending like I am, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm a feminist, shocker. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily saying you have to be. Labels can be weird. I just would prefer you not think that any man who willingly went to go see Barbie was gay by default. Also, that being said, my best friend's on standby and she will come save me immediately should you say anything even remotely resembling an Andrew Tate quote. That one's just for my safety. Now, last but not least, I'm looking for someone who wants me as a partner, not a cheerleader. The blonde hair can sometimes throw people off. So if you want a little more rah rah, sis, boom, ba, Chris, I love that for you. You're a very attractive man. That's why you're here. I'm sure you can find a variety of options available to you at the local mall. And that being said, Chris, do you feel like we're on the same page? Can we order a drink and try not to talk about our ex for the next hour or are we reading different chapters? Fantastic. Let me go pay for parking. I'll be right back. Condescending. She just gave me the ick. I, I, I'm sorry. This just gives me the ick. Look, there's nothing inherently wrong with what you're saying. You're looking for something serious. I wonder if you were looking for something serious in your early 20s. You probably weren't. Okay. You're a feminist. Ick. You're looking for a partner. Hey, nothing wrong with that. You just come across as very condescending. And maybe this is for comedy, but there are a little bit of seriousness in every joke, right? So you probably have this within your personality. It's not nice. It's not attractive. This isn't going to help you. So I can see why you're single. So is it my job as the dad of my children to make sure that it is food in their mother's refrigerator? Is that my obligation? Let me just give my two cents here. The answer is yes. Unfortunately, the answer is yes. And this is why I believe so. When you have a child, your life no longer becomes about you. It becomes about your child. Your main priority, whether that's directly or indirectly, should be your child. So if you were with the baby mother, for example, I would say your priority needs to be the woman so that you guys together can take care of the child. Indirectly, your priority is your child. Now, you guys aren't together, but that doesn't change the fact that you can't have your baby mother starving because she's the one, she's the primary caretaker of your child. So if she's starving, are the kids going to be good? Maybe she gives the last food to the kids, but is she going to have the energy, the willpower to be a mother? If we're being real, you can't watch your baby mom starve. You can't. You can't because that's going to affect the children negatively. Listen, I don't care how you want to word it, however you want to flip it. It's your job to make sure your kids are fucking fed. 
as well as it is hers. But clearly she can't fucking feed them. So that means you have to make sure that they are fed. I don't give a fuck if y'all don't stay together. I don't give a fuck if you hate the bitch. I don't give a fuck if you and her never see eye to eye. Your kids need to eat regardless. Now, please don't get it fucked up. I understand your frustration because he said they have the kids 50-50. So he probably feeling like, well, damn, bitch. I got to fill up my fridge and yours. I can see if he was a deadbeat and the least he could do was put food in the fridge, but that's not the case. But at the end of the day, the kids still have to eat. It wouldn't matter if she was a fucking crackhead. The kids still got to eat. Now, you could try to get 100% custody, but then you would have to pay for daycare and a babysitter while you work. So it's going to be cheaper to just keep the 50-50 and put fucking groceries in her fucking fridge. You're going to be saving money regardless. Unless your kids are older and they like 8th, 9th, 10th grade and they can stay with you full time and you don't need no babysitter or daycare. But other than that, just, just feed the kids. Stand by the opinion that men are not inherent leaders that they are not meant to be leaders um literally they're not and i really didn't want to say this but like i was so scared to say this because i already know like people are just gonna come for me but i'm a relationship therapist and so i could not i couldn't scroll past this video and not say anything from my experience the couples that are the strongest most successful longest lasting are the ones in which the woman is the leader of the relationship since the dawn of time, there's been so many women leaders that have been like in the Bible and in ancient Egypt. All right, let me just stop you there. Okay, let me just stop you right there. This is how I know you're delusional and you're wrong. I'm a couples therapist. Cause so that, that validates my stupid opinion that I'm about to give. You know how I know that you're delusional? Because you try to validate the point that women are natural leaders. By referencing the Bible? That just shows me that you are viewing things from whatever lens you want to view things from. Because there's no shot. There's no shot that you read the Bible and you came out with, oh, women are so strong. Women are so strong. Oh, oh. Women naturally. Didn't, didn't God say women shouldn't be leading in church? He, li he literally said that. There's no way. So that already tells me that you are looking at the Bible from your lens. So you're looking at most things from your lens, the lens that you want to see things from. Whatever, like women's were always just the head of the game. I think somewhere down the line, society made it a thing to like reverse roles and say that men were the providers and the protectors. I think it's a societal thing. I don't think it's instinctive or natural. Because like that other creator was saying, um, I stitched the video so you could go back and watch it. If it was a natural thing, and I actually wrote a video about this in my notes a couple months back, probably like October, and I was going to say something, but I got scared and I never posted the video. But since she did it, let's really just talk about it. If it was a natural thing. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Did you just submit to be the follower in a video about how women are natural leaders? Right. It wouldn't be forced. We wouldn't be having 50-50 conversations. We wouldn't be trying to remind men to do it. It would have been natural. It is more, from my experience, what I've observed with couples, it is more, you know, common for men to want to be told what to do. Even when we look at the most powerful couples, um, there's over- Are you mistaken men wanting to be told what to do for clear communication? Because I, I feel like that's what you're doing. Talk about not having to remind men about 50-50. Are you guys not feminists? Are, are we not equal? What, what, what's happening here? The times have changed. That's why men are doing 50-50 or men want 50-50 because all we hear is how women are equal to men and they can do everything that men can do. So of course... There are going to be men out there who go, hmm, why would I provide for my equal? That don't make no sense. Ways like a man who is kind of just like taking the lead of his wife. He might be the face of something, but he it's evident that he's taking the lead of his wife. The wife is the brains of the operation. Okay, I wanted to give a really quick example. So take LeBron James and Savannah James. It is evident that Sabron is out all the time doing what he needs to do while Savannah is at home actually running their family system. So LeBron is the face of the system, but he goes out and he gets the money, um, quote unquote, providing, but he brings it back home to Savannah in order for her to successfully water and grow their family system. LeBron is the face and the provider while Savannah is the operator. And it's a great, it's genius. It's a great system. Being the operator doesn't mean that you're the leader. 
if I own a company and I hire a CEO to run the company, I, I'm still the owner of the company, right? I'm still running the shit. It's my company. My CEO is not going to do anything that I don't tell him to do, right? He's running the company. He's operating on a day-to-day -day basis. Or oh, she is 2024. But I'm the owner. So as much as LeBron James going out and making the money and Savannah may be doing the things behind the scenes, I guarantee nothing gets done without LeBron's say so because it's LeBron's image, it's LeBron's face. If something goes wrong, it's LeBron. Like Obama, for example, Obama and Michelle, he's very open about the fact, first of all, he introduces himself as, I am Michelle Obama's husband. And secondly, he um, is very- I don't even want to talk about Obama, okay? I, I, I don't even want to talk about that guy. Open about the fact of, you know, that Michelle ran the country and he was just the face. We noticed that when a man is really, you know, confident in his identity, he's much more likely to behave as Obama. And it's so funny because men, because of society, I'm just going to write it off to societal, you know, norms. Because of society, men feel like they have to be dominant. They have to be the one to make all the decisions. But ironically enough, when they are in that position, they are uncomfortable. I don't make the rules. This is just what I see. I do want to say that men are, you know, at their best when they're protecting. I could give them that. But when it comes to leading... If we just look at where society is going today, the best companies are being ran by women. We don't talk about it. Again, this is what I said. She's seeing things through the lens that she wants to she wants to see it. The best companies are okay, well. This is why I'm sorry to cut the video here again. Feminists can't be in any role is about helping people. They can't because their mind is skewed. They see things how they want to see it. They're always going to have bias. Because, you know, society has always wanted to sh women and women don't get jobs and women don't get the CEO positions, but they do. So for my men out there, if leading doesn't feel natural to you, just find you a dominant woman that is willing and able to lead. And it won't be hard because naturally women are leaders. And dominant doesn't mean dominant over you. It just means confident, certain, sure, emotional, but the good kind. Because if you're able to tap into your emotions effectively, you can make the best decisions. But yeah, you guys are safe kings. You don't have to lead the whole entire herd. Women can do it too. As humans, we're actually both masculine and feminine. As a human being, you should be able to operate from both places. But you know. And let me guess, it's 50-50, right? Men and women are just as masculine and just as feminine because... Wait. Gender isn't a real thing. We're human beings. I moved to Dubai to become a porta potty. And if you don't know what that is, it's women who come to Dubai and get pooped on for $50,000. Dubai is most known for being extremely expensive. Some of the most wealthy people in the world visit or live in Dubai. They are known for their architecture and their really delicious foods. A few years ago, a handful of influencers came forward and said that their lives turned upside down. After receiving messages on social media from men asking for them to fly out to Dubai and have a good time with them. A lot of these girls were extremely happy and they agreed to take the trips, but they didn't know what was going to happen in their future. In order to receive these gifts and the money, some of these girls were asked to do strange things with animals. They were asked to eat or bathe themselves in really strange substances. It was also really common for them to be showered in another strange substance. Some of these girls were too disgusted to do any of these activities and were stuck, basically stranded in Dubai with no way home because they couldn't afford their tickets back. Other girls were extremely pleased with the action. Why would you go to Dubai with no return ticket? Why would you go to Dubai someone books you a flight to Dubai, why would you not also get confirmation of a place to stay? Like, oh, you, you want to fly me out? Okay, I need to know when I'm coming back and I need to know that there's going to be a hotel booked for me to stay for those days. Why would that not be? They just hear all this money and they just, <laughs> they just stop thinking. They said that what they did was worth every penny. Others said that the trip left them traumatized. They suffer from PTSD because of what they had to go through while on this vacation. Dubai porta potties aren't just Dubai porta potties. The more you know. I think going to Dubai and you know having someone shit on you, you must have an amazing ability to disassociate. Okay, one minute you're getting shit on. Next minute, you're buying stuff from Amazon. You're you're showing off your lavish apartment. 
Like, you must have the ability to completely shut off. And that probably means that you're not a very healthy person mentally. Because, <laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, I couldn't imagine. Why doesn't anyone talk about how hard it is being a pretty girl in this day and age? Not even in just this, in this day and age, just in general. Like, being a pretty girl is literally a blessing and a curse at the same time. It comes with so much, like... <gasps> I don't even want to get into so many story times, but it really comes with a lot. Like, whether it's friendships, whether it's relationships, whether it's anything. I don't care how many people troll me on the internet for saying it, but being a pretty girl is hard. Standing on your boundaries and standards, doing your own thing, investing in your skin, your makeup, your hair, your clothes, working towards organizations and passions that you love, doing things that make you feel feminine and beautiful, going after your goals and your dreams, cutting off toxic people out of your life, having radiant beauty that shines from within. All of these things are what make a pretty girl a pretty girl. You don't think people are going to be jealous of that? Or try to sabotage you out of it? Or pretend to be your friend when in reality they're a secret hater? Being a pretty girl is hard. If you're a pretty girl and you're watching this, which if you're watching this, you definitely are, go join the Pretty Girls Movement on Instagram. I love you guys, Steve. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. This is why there are a lot of men out there who don't have empathy for women. They don't listen to women. And they don't take what women say seriously. Because I said this the other day. There are women out there who will complain about literally anything. Literally, what does chasing your goals have to do with being pretty? I have absolutely no idea, okay? Because women can figure out a way to complain about pretty much anything. When they complain about things that are valid, it's like burnout. We've been hearing so much yapping and complaining. It's just like, oh my goodness gracious, stop. This liquor got me in my zone. Now I'm blowing.